hat, sunglasses, Pepsi, notes, sources, thick skin, check. You already know. Let's go. Golden Blooded is a college football YouTube channel for entertainment. So make sure to hit that like and subscribe button. And let's get into our next college football video. Finally, 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 finally something good to talk about, West Virginia. No, unfortunately, I'm not talking about football. That is still in the crapper. I'm talking about basketball. I'm actually excited about basketball season. Is West Virginia turning into a basketball school? Well, you know, I hear from Kansas fans, Duke fans, and Gonzaga fans that it's not such a bad deal. But sorry, I'm, I'm still a football fan first. But I am happy about West Virginia basketball. We have cracked the new AP Top 25. So let's go through the new AP Top 25 for college basketball. I'm going to give you their ranking, wins and losses, who they lost to, and their points per game, and what they allow per game. That way you can give a good comparison on what they look like against the other teams in the Top 25. Number one is Purdue. And Purdue is a really good team. They're undefeated, averaging 76.8 points per game and allowing just 61.5 points per game. West Virginia actually lost to Purdue head-to-head, -head, but so has everybody else. Number two is UConn. They're 13-0, zero losses. They're averaging 83.6 points per game. That's a good offensive team, but even better defensively, allowing just 58.6 points per game. They're good on both sides of the ball when it comes to basketball. Number three is Houston. 12-1. Their only loss was to Alabama by seven points. They average 74.2 points per game, but their strength is on the defense, allowing just 49.8 points per game. Number one in the nation on defense. Number four is Kansas, 11-1. Only lost to Tennessee by 14 points, averaging 78.8 points per game, allowing just 64.3 points per game. Solid on both sides of the ball. Number five, Arizona, 12-1. Only lost at Utah, 15 points. Offensive team for sure, averaging 90.2 points per game, allowing 73.8 points per game. Number six is Texas, having to deal with that issue with their head coach, Chris Beard. 10-1, only lost to Illinois by seven points, averaging 82.5 points per game and allowing just 61.3 points per game. Good on both sides of the ball. Number seven, Tennessee, 10-2, two, two losses. Lost to Colorado by two and at Arizona by five, averaging 74.7 points per game and allowing just 52.8 points per game. So they're definitely a defensive team. Number eight, Alabama, 10-2, losses to UConn by 15 and at Gonzaga by 10, averaging 83.7 points per game and allowing 72.1 points per game. Definitely an offensive type of team. Number nine, Arkansas, 11-1, only lost to Creighton by three points, averaging 79.4 points per game and allowing just 61.9 points per game. Again, Arkansas, a defensive team. Number 10 Gonzaga, 10 and 3. A three loss team in the top 10. Not too sure about that. Lost at Texas by 19, then to Purdue by 18, then to Baylor by 1, averaging 82.5 points per game and allowing 73.8 points per game. So they're definitely stronger on the offensive side of the ball. Number 11, UCLA, 11 and 2. Losses to Illinois by 9 and Baylor by 5, averaging 80.3 points per game, allowing 61.5 points per game. Solid on both sides of the ball. Number 12, Baylor, 9 and 2. Losses to Virginia by 7 at Marquette by 26. Yikes. Average 80.4 points per game and allowing 66.3 points per game. They are solid on both sides of the ball. Number 13, Virginia. They're 8 and 2. Losses to Houston by 8 at Miami Hurricanes by 2. Averaging 70.2 points per game and allowing just 59.8 points per game. As usual, better on the defensive side of the ball. Number 14, Miami Hurricanes. 12 and 1. Only lost to Maryland by 18 points. 78 points per game, allowing 68 points per game. Number 15, Wisconsin. 9 and 2. Losses to Kansas by 1 and Wake Forest by 3. Averaging 68.3 points per game and allowing 60.8 points per game. It's a wonder why they only have two losses because they are not very good on the offensive side of the ball. Number 16, Indiana 10-3 and three losses at Rutgers by 15, Arizona by 14, at Kansas by 22. How are they still ranked? Averaging 80.1 points per game and allowing 65.3 points per game. Number 17, Duke, also 10 and 3. Losses to Kansas by 5, Purdue by 19, at Wake Forest by 11, averaging 72.9 points per game and allowing just 60.4 points per game. So they're actually better on the defensive side of the ball. Number 18, TCU, 10 and 1. Only lost to Northwestern State by one point. That's a bad loss, by the way. Averaging 76.8 points per game and allowing just 61.6 points per game. Definitely better on the offensive side of the ball. Number 19, Kentucky, 8 and 3. Losses to Michigan State by 9 at Gonzaga by 16 and to UCLA by 10, averaging 78.7 points per game and allowing 64.4 points per game. Number 20 is Auburn. They're 10 and 2. Losses to Memphis by 9 at USC by 3, averaging 73.7 points per game and allowing just 62.1 points per game. Number 21, Mississippi State, 11 and 1. Only loss was to Drake by 6 points, averaging just 68.2 points per game and allowing just 52.6 points per game. So they're terrible on offense, but pretty sinking good on defense. There is a tie at number 22, and it is Zay. 
Duke. They are 10 and 3 losses to Indiana by 2, Duke by 7, and Gonzaga by 4, averaging 83.8 points per game and allowing 73.6 points per game. So they are an offensive juggernaut in college basketball. Tied with them at 22 is New Mexico, undefeated 13 and 0, zero losses, averaging 78.7 points per game and allowing just 66.2 points per game. Number 24, this is where West Virginia is, 10 and 2 losses to Purdue by 12 and at Xavier by 10. Both of them top 25 teams, averaging 81.3 points per game. West Virginia is actually good on offense this year, but they're still good on defense because they're allowing just 66.2 points per game. And finally, number 25, North Carolina, 9 and 4, losses to Iowa State by 5 points, Alabama by 2, at Indiana by 12, and at Virginia Tech by 8, averaging 81.5 points per game and allowing 74.5 points per game. What's exciting about West Virginia basketball this year is we actually have an offense to go along with a pretty good defense. West Virginia is balanced, and not only are we good on offense, but we're one of the best on offense. Number 34 in the nation in three-point percentage, 38.2% from the three-point line, and we're number 29 in points per game, that 81.3 points per game. We have five prolific scores, six good three-point shooters as well. Stevenson is our leading scorer, 14.5 points per game, 46.6% from the three-point line. Mitchell, 12.8 points per game, 35.5 from three-point land. Toussaint, 10.8 points per game, 31.4 from the three-point line. Johnson, 9.6 points per game, 29% from the three-point line. Emmett Matthews Jr., 10.8 points per game, 48.4% from three-point Three point land, and then of course, Seth Wilson is 45.2 percent from three point land, and of course, West Virginia is much, much better from the free throw line. That was a must. We had to get better from three point land, and we had to get better with our free throws. And West Virginia has done both. I predicted that West Virginia was going to be a much better basketball team this year because we did great in the transfer portal. One of our guys that left actually came back. I'm talking about Emmett Matthews Jr., he actually transferred to Washington and then transferred from Washington. Washington back to West Virginia, and he's even better than what he was before he transferred to Washington. Glad he came back to West Virginia because he's one of our better scorers. Second highest scorer on the team. Pretty good from three-point land, and everybody is hitting their free throws consistently. West Virginia will be a tournament team, and I think West Virginia could actually make a deep run in the NCAA tournament this year. I think they're a solid Sweet 16 team. I think they also have a pretty good chance of getting to the Elite Eight. Decent shot of being a Final Four team as long as we don't sleep on the job. And that was one of our issues on the road against Xavier. Now, of course, we got beat handily by Purdue by 12 points, but everybody, everybody is getting smoked by Purdue. Top 10 Gonzaga, they got beat by Purdue by 18 points. We got beat by Purdue by only 12. Same thing with Duke, who's number 17. They got beat by Purdue by 19. Compare that to West Virginia, who only got beat by 12. The 12 seems like a significant margin, but if you look at the other teams that have also gotten beaten by Purdue, it's actually not that big. The game that we fell asleep on, well, there was two actually, was on the road to Xavier. We actually were beating them handily at halftime, and then for whatever reason, we fell asleep at the wheel in the second half, and Xavier is a good shooting team. So if you start falling asleep on the offensive side of the ball or defensive side of the ball, Xavier can burn you with their offense. And in our last game against Stony Brook, yes, West Virginia did start snoozing against them. Luckily for us, Stony Brook is such a bad team that it didn't really matter. So as long as we can avoid going to sleep and not trying West Virginia can beat just about anybody in the entire nation. We're about to head into Big 12 play. That's when things get really, really tough. Including West Virginia, there are five teams in the current top 25 that are from the Big 12, so it will get tough in the Big 12. But we have the scores this year to go along with the defense. So I have confidence that we can beat anybody and everybody in the Big 12 as long as we show up and play our A game in Big 12 conference play. Y'all let me know in the comments section if you're a West Virginia fan, how excited are you that West Virginia actually has an offense? Even if you're not a West Virginia fan, knowing what I just told you, even though there's a lot ahead of us, do you think West Virginia could be a legitimate Final Four team in 2022 slash 2023? That's all I got for for this show. Like and subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you on my next show.